Welcome back to another, well, uh, relaxing <laughs> mini mailbag in between. So this is not from China. I mean, the content is from China, but it was shipped within Germany from, yeah, maker shop. <laughs> this is a really small bag and there's nothing else in here. Okay, the bag within the bag is really <laughs> small. Can we rip that open somehow? <clears throat> Probably not. Uh, yeah, and it's uh, Y-271 <laughs> uh, with a QMC5883 compass module. Uh, basically, it's a three-axis magnetometer on a breakout board with uh, quite a lot of components and yeah, the pin header for you to solder in. Uh, I guess we break out the microscope right away. There's a lot going on here on this little, yeah, it's a 14 by 50 millimeter board. So we have here, uh, because it's marked on the back side, I will tell you, uh, VCC, ground, I squared C, SCL and SDA and then a data ready interrupt output pin. And we have, uh, yeah, resistors, 2.2K obviously, some smaller capacitors, one big one here, or this is a diode, I don't know. Uh, then a mystery chip here marked RKX. I have no idea what that is. I suspect it's an I squared C level shifter because our big guy here is running three point at 3.3 .3 volts. And this is, sorry, again, flicker. And this is again uh, supposed to be compatible with five volts here on this side. And then we have here a little chip, uh, also mystery, I didn't found anything. It's a 482K, uh, yeah, voltage regulator, supposedly. And then we have here our QMC5883L. Uh, can I make that more readable? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oops. Sorry, there it is, marked HA5883. Um, yeah, and that's a licensed build, uh, so really officially a licensed build. Honeywell HMC5883L, uh, licensed build in China, of course. Um, yeah, I guess I'll make a photo of that thing and then we do a little bit of um, reverse engineering because I want to know if <laughs> these inputs here, uh, especially SCL and SDA, are really uh, 5 volt tolerant or compatible. And yeah, here's the backside and you see uh, trace-wise um, there's not much going on here. One, two, three, four traces. The rest is one big round plane. So that shouldn't be too hard to reverse engineer. I mean, there are not a lot of traces. And I also have the <laughs> mirrored backside here of the board with also a few traces. <laughs> I've drawn in all the traces from the backside where I was not quite sure I did some measurements. I did some additional measurements where things didn't make sense. Uh, for example, I found out these two pins here of the supposedly linear voltage regulator were connected, then things made more sense. I also marked where ground is routed from the back plane to the upper side. Now I can reverse engineer my whole thing. So the circuit is quite good and almost complete. Let's start with the power supply section. So VCC comes in here and buggers off to what I call a 5 volt rail if you run the whole thing at 5 volt. 
And we have a little decoupling capacitor here and then comes our mystery linear voltage regulator, the 4A2K. And after that, probably low dropout by the way, and after that we have a big electrolytic decoupling capacitor and that gives us our internal 3.3 volt rail. Then we have the level shifting section for I squared C. So SDA and SCL come in and are pulled up via 2.2K resistors to our 5 volt rail. Then they go into this mystery chip, the RKX, which probably just contains two MOSFETs with the gates pulled to the 3.3 volt rail. And the outputs are pulled up again also to the 3.3 volt rail wire 2.2K resistors. And that's actually doing a bidirectional level shifting between 3.3 volts and 5 volts or whatever you run that chip on. And these bugger off into the pins 1 and 16, so SDA and SCL of our QMC5883L. So the Chinese license build of the Honeywell HMC5883. L. <clears throat> okay, uh, then our 3.3 volt rail also goes to the VDD IO pin, which is obviously the power supply for the digital stuff, the VDD pin, which is the power supply for the magnetic analog stuff, and another pin called S1, which has, according to the data sheet, also be uh, bound to VDD. Two more decoupling capacitors here at the VDDIO pin and the S1 pin, they are close to them. Uh, then we have our ground connection, pin 11 and 9, which of course are connected to ground. Another speciality, pin C1, which needs to be connected to ground via a very big, according to the datasheet, 4.7 microfarad capacitor. And then we have two more speciality pins, STEP and SETC, which need to be connected again according to the datasheet. And they are connected, all these connections are on that little board, via a 0.22 microfarad capacitor. It's all there. And the rest of the pins 3, 5, 6, 7 and 14 are really just not connected internally to the die. Uh, finally, and that's the criticism, I have the data ready interrupt output. So as soon as that thing has finished a measurement and has data ready, it gives you a little interrupt signal here for your microcontroller. That's not level shifted. That comes out at the internal, yeah, probably 3.3 volts, uh, which shouldn't be a problem when you connect it to a 5 volt Arduino, which can easily read CMOS 3.3 volt logic levels. A little warning at that point. There are modules out there that don't have this elaborate level shifting for the I squared C bus. So if you connect them to a 5 volt microcontroller like your usual Arduino Nano or something, you have to be careful what you do on your SCL and SDA line. Don't pull them up to your Arduino 5 volt rail, just pull them up to the Arduino 3.3 volt rail. Now that I have gained some confidence that that little thing is indeed 5 volt compatible, I hooked it up to an Arduino, I'm just supplying power here, and I connected the scope to the data ready output, which is usually used as a interrupt input at your MCU. I'm not using it at the moment, I'm just interested in the voltage level. The hookup is quite primitive and I won't show you a schematic for it. Just connect ground, 5 volts and the SDA and SCL line of your I squared C bus. My oscilloscope probe here is connected to the data ready pin and that's my oscilloscope ground. On the oscilloscope we see that the QMC5883L sends you a data ready interrupt signal every 250 milliseconds. That's what's written in the datasheet. 
the signal level is at 3.35 volts so high enough to feed into the digital input of a 5 volt Arduino or any other 5 volt MCU. Fortunately, there is already a library available for the Arduino. Simply go into the library manager and search for 5883 and you find the QMC5883L Compass library from MR Programs. Please note, the MHMC5883 libraries you find here in the library manager they won't work with the QMC5883L. The reason being slight differences in the register setup uh, of the two chips. But anyway, that one works perfectly and I'll show you some examples. We start by the example from the library, not my own code, that simply outputs the raw x, y, z values from the sensor. So here you see the output on the Arduino serial monitor and if I turn now my sensor you see the values on all three axes changing and yeah it seems to work like a charm. Uh, of course <laughs> you need trigonometry to make sense of these values and you also are supposed to calibrate that thing the first time you use it, uh, which I won't do now, but uh, let's go to another example which uh, shows actually the heading in degrees. So that's the example that gives you the azimuth, uh, so yeah, the heading in degrees, at least I hope so. Let's see. So here we have on the serial monitor the heading in degrees and yeah if I turn that around 180 degrees. Yeah not quite, not quite. But uh, you know I mentioned you need to calibrate that thing. Also we got a whole lot of noise here. If I just yeah uh, let it be. And that's of course caused by all that stuff going on here on <laughs> the signal lines. Uh, so the currents here and the supply, these all create little magnetic fields and these influence, again we are measuring the magnetic field, the very weak magnetic field of the earth. These uh, influence the readings of the chip and create all that jitter and noise here. Uh, yeah, uh, will not be really easy to make a layout where this thing gets accurate readings, I guess. Yeah. Sorry, couldn't resist it. So uh, yeah, uh, our readings are totally off the scale, uh, yeah, jittering wildly. But as soon as I move that away from my mouse, the readings get much more stable. I've just mentioned that the HMC5583L libraries are not working with the QMC5883L and vice versa of course. The reason being, while the QMC thing is a license build of the HMC and they are pin compatible and electrically compatible, they are not software compatible. That is, their internal register addresses are slightly different and the HMC has some registers, for example here 10 to 12, so a 24-bit, 3-8-bit registers, internal chip identification, which identifies uniquely each chip, and the QMC is missing that. Reason being, that's a Chinese license build and yeah, laser etching or whatever, a unique identification into a hardwired register on a chip costs money. I almost forgot the eBay listing. This is of course German eBay and this was the GY-271 QMC5883 Compass module 
a 3-axis magnetometer, a sensor Arduino, blah blah blah, and it's not fully compatible with the original Honeywell HMC 5883L as we saw. I cashed out 515 for it, so dirt cheap, and it was inside Germany from census-de. And please note, uh, yeah, not all modules with that chip have that elaborate level shifting. Have a close look at the photos on the eBay listing. So that was the <laughs> well, mailbag with a little bit of reverse engineering and already getting that thing up and running with an Arduino of a little Chinese QMC5883L module. And yeah, there will be more about that thing in the future, I guess. But until then, bye.